Okay, so this is a table of the homework assignments for this month. And uh, what you guys do is uh, they're on that list there, page by page. Get them done at your own pace, but try to get them all done by the end of the month. Okay. Because we want to move into the into the light blue book next month. You guys can get that book. How many people have it already? Two, three. Should we be bringing it to class? Because the time I did, we didn't use it, so I was just like, oh. We're going to finish up this, and then we're going to jump into that. But it's not going to be a, a seam. It's going to be an overlap. So okay. next week, probably OK. So bring, start bringing it? Yeah. Okay. Both of them, or just the workbook, or just the book? Well, the book and the workbook go together. And I'm going to do the assignments that are going to be out of the workbook. Okay. We're going to do the book assignments in class, but the ones that you turn in are in the workbook. Okay. And that's set up so that if you own the book, you can rip out the pages and turn those in. But I like when people make a copy and keep the book intact for their reference and all that. Who had a question? And then resell it. <laughs> yeah. Then you can resell it to a rental company. You can resell it or you can just keep it, you know, if you want to become a music teacher or something. You know. True. It's pretty fun. It's like almost $300. I don't know about Well, probably not now. In a heart. Yeah, there you go. Everybody sign it for him. Yeah, can I make a piece? Can I write it? I did not that. Adrian's working at the fair 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. Doing what? I'm on a fair. That's a that's a brutal go. So, oh, so is it? Speaking of the fair, I sing in a country band, and on the 25th and 26th we're playing at the fair. So come check it out. It's gonna be fun. It's by the Pig Races. <laughs> yeah. So what's like? Um, we do like classic country. We also do. It's like a mixture. We call ourselves country, but we're really not. It's like. We do some like we do a little. It's like a mixture of old and new. So like we do some cash and like some um, it's more old time stuff. Yeah, like a mixture. And then we also do like some seventies rock stuff. So we're not really a country band, but our name's the Silverado, so it sounds like a country. Silverado. But I'm working on getting more classic country in there. It's better. <laughs> okay, so here's the scale, G to G. On its own, without any flats or sharps, what does that scale consider to be? Quick, it's quick. So now, if I wanted to make that a G Lydian mode, what would I have to do? C sharp. Sharp to C. What? Sharp to the fourth, but you have to. Oh, sharp to the Does anybody remember any of the formulas for the modes? Ionian is what? The natural. You want what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. No sharps or flats. That's Ionian. Dorian is what? One, one flat two. two. Flat. No flat, flat two. No flat three. Flat three, 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 it's local. It's local. <laughs> if you look on a map of ancient Greece, these were all regions of Greece. They had Doria, they had Aeolia, Aeolia, and Phrygia was a region. Lydia. Were they only allowed to ride in those boats? Uh, they had rural areas where they would use modes like that in those areas. That's the origination of where the sounds came. But then the Greeks had another way of looking at modes. Uh, they had the Dorian, they had the Hypodorian, they had the Lydian, the Hypolydian. They had a different way of looking at it. And that's a whole other subject of music, music theory from antiquity. But they had the original Greek modes, and then they had these other modes that they went down a fourth, and they went down a fifth to get the other, the Hypodorian, the Hypolydian, all those modes. And that is not used at all anymore. It's just for researchers, you know. It's like studying the Latin language or something. Anyway, so the Phrygian is what? One? Flat two, flat, two, flat three, flat, flat seven. Six and flat seven. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Or? 
one, five, two, four, three, four, three, four, four, five, five, six, five, seven, one. And then we have our Lydia. Sharp four. Yeah. And then we have our Aeolian. And we have our low green, right? One, flat two, flat three, four, flat five, flat six, flat seven. Okay, so here's G. What do I got to do to make a G phrygian? Flat the two and the three and the six. Seven oh, so seven times seven. Three. If this is a G major scale, that's a flat seven, right? It's a G major scale. Yeah. All right. So it's already a flat seven up here, right? So when you when you want a flat seven, you don't have to do anything to that if it's an F natural. Okay. So once again, the Phrygian G Phrygian G A flat. C, right? Oh, yes. And what? Let's keep going. One, flat two, flat three, four, five, right? Yeah, that's it. Flat six. Flat six, right? Oh. And then flat seven. One, right? Seven. So that's G Phrygian, right? So what's the key signature for G Phrygian? Three flats, right? E flat. E flat major is the key signature, right? Mm -hmm. So E flat major must be the relative major of G Phrygian, right? Mm -hmm. Make any sense? So here's the key signature. So what's the relative minor of E flat major? Good. So now, what's the relationship between C minor and G Phrygian? Phrygian is the fifth above the relative minor. So G, G Phrygian and C minor share the same key, right? And that's E flat major, right? Okay, now, if I have G Phrygian, what happens if I do this? Something right? That's yeah. the answer, right? Dorian. G question mark? Dorian. It's not Dorian. Is it Dorian? It's not Dorian. Oh, okay. So, Grace, can you do us the honors? Okay. Let's listen to this. This guy's been up for 13 hours straight, right? Longer than that. You didn't. You went to work at 6 p.m., right? Yeah. He's just going to shut up. Shut up. <laughs>
What is that scale? Sounds like a what? Romanian. Could be, but it's got that sourness to it, right? What's the key signature now? A flat and E flat. What what's what's the C minor scale? Play a C minor scale. For your scale. Now play C harmonic minor. Oh, now play a G G uh, C harmonic minor starting on G. Buried in a cotton of Transylvanian soil, otherwise it messed him up really bad. You know that, and I know that. Yeah, it's pretty sure. <laughs> so that's a fifth mode of the harmonic minor scale. So it's a Phrygian mode with a natural three in it, right? This is the favorite scale of all guitarists who play what kind of music? Mid mm -hmm. Metal. All the metal guys love this scale. <laughs> <laughs> it's a harmonic minor scale starting on the fifth. So fifth mode of the harmonic minor scale. By taking that B and making it a B natural, it's a Phrygian mode with a natural three. So some people call that a Phrygian major. So this scale falls in a whole other category of what are called synthetic scales, right? Or modes of a harmonic minor scale. So you have modes of a major scale, but you also have a harmonic minor scale has seven modes in it, and a melodic minor scale has seven modes in it. All the scales that have seven notes all have modes starting from each note. So the amount of scales starts to become exponential, doesn't it? And so you hone it down to the ones you like. And we all love Transylvania, so they keep this one, right? Okay, so modes can be modified by changing one note, right? Okay, now one of the most one of the most popular scales of all, the most popular scale is one of the modes of the melodic minor scale. Here's the modes of the major scale, right? So if I have this chord, gather up the notes and find out what they are. A, C sharp, B sharp, G. So it's some kind of A chord, right? Yeah. So we get A, A C sharp. Yeah. You say A authentic Zeppelin? Or something? <laughs> <laughs> so you got a 1, a 3, a sharp 5, and a flat 7, right? Does that make any sense? Here's our, here's our A major 7, right? The G sharp is the natural 7, so a G natural is a flat 7, right? C sharp is a natural 3, E is our regular perfect 5th, so an E sharp would be an augmented 5th, yeah? Okay, but the G is a G natural, so it's a flat 7. So we have an A7, sharp 5, 
Or some people just write a plus seven. A plus seven. Okay. And then a lot of people write the notation on the chart. A7 altered, and that allows the performer to make up his mind like this. Alter means what? Any of those tones. They're not part of the chord, right? So the performer, when he sees alt, he can choose whatever ones he wants. All right, but well, for this chord, it's an A7 sharp five. That's a very common chord in the real book, isn't it, Greg? How common is that? Super. Super. Just like, just like a short. Yeah, like all, all so what down. scale can we use over that? Well, it's an A7, right? So it's some kind of dominant chord, right? Because it's got a three, right? It's got the three and the flat seven, right? And the root. Those are the main tones of the dominant chord, right? But the fifth is modified. So what kind of scale can we use over that? Nobody knows. I love it. Bless you. No. Can you repeat that? A seven sharp five, right? So it's an A seven is some kind of dominant chord, right? So we can use a scale over a dominant chord. Usually, the scale to use over a dominant chord is a mixolydian, right? Or the parent major, like if it's an A, the parent major of A seven would be a D major key. D major scale that would be equal to an A mixolydian, right? But it's got the sharp five in there. So what kind of scale can we use over that? Well, we can take a mixolydian sharp five, right? We can do that. Or what else can we do? So here's the quickie rule. If you have a dominant seventh chord like that with a sharp five, you can play one of the modes of a, of a melodic minor scale. Come up a half step, B mm -hmm. flat, and play melodic minor. C sharp. B flat melodic minor. So it's B flat melodic minor. No. You got B, C, D, E, F, G, F. So B flat, C, fits really well over the sharp five chords. So what do we got here? We got an A7, right? A, C sharp, E, G, right? Now an A7 sharp five, I'm going to go A, C sharp, E sharp, or F. Is because it's about a thousand times in, in the fit jazz real voices. Anytime people use an A7, they can throw an A7 sharp five in. So if I got that chord, I'm going to play the E flat melodic minor scale. I'm going to take A and then go up a half a step and play melodic minor. So I got B flat, then we got C, D flat. E flat, okay, F, G, A, B, A, B flat, C, D, flat, right, B flat, C, D flat, E flat, Seven. 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 That's one of the common uses. 
this up the melodic minor scale. It's in jazz, you play it a half a step above a dominant chord. That's a quick rule. And that works in blues too. Really cool in blues. People, that's a, that's a head turner. If you're playing in a blues jam and you go to the dominant chord and you play a melodic minor, a half step above the dominant chord, people just go like this. What the hell was that? You know, Because it sounds good and it's also a little bit not normal. Okay, so that is the B flat melodic minor scale. Talked about the fifth mode of the Frenchy of the harmonic minor scale being the heavy metal scale, right? The fifth mode of the harmonic minor scale. Right? Mm -hmm. So if we're jamming an E on guitar, right? We're jamming an E, we're playing metal, we would play an A, right? Harmonic minor. B. If, if you play an A harmonic minor scale, if you go to the fifth. That would be E, right? Oh. Okay. Oh. Got it. So A harmonic minor would be the scale. If you go to the fifth mode of it, A B C D E, make any sense? Yeah. So you would be jamming an E, right? So that's the metal scale. In jazz, if you have a dominant chord that's altered, the first trick is every time you have a dominant seventh chord, up a half a step, play a melodic minor. Now, that also works for chords that aren't altered, but you have to walk around with kid gloves because when you have an A7 chord, it doesn't have that E sharpener, it has an E natural, right? So that note, it's tricky, you know? You gotta, you gotta play it like a blues kind of thing. You gotta, you gotta put this note in between. You gotta sort of slur it if you're gonna play it against the regular dominant. You have to kind of treat it like it's a, uh, a non-harmonic tone or an accented tone. But those kind of scales will work. So every mode is based on a scale. So in the major scale, we have this as our major scale. We have all these modes based on the major scale. So if we have a melodic minor scale. give us? What I'm asking for is this. We want to go D, E flat, F, G, A, B, C, C. So that would be the scale created from the second mode, right? So D to E flat is how far? Half step, right? Yeah. So I'm going to say this is the one. There's a flat two. What's F in the terms of if D is the root? F would be a what? A flat three, three right? Yeah. And then G would be a four, right? Mm -hmm. okay. A would be a what? Hammer. Five. Five. And then B, oh, here we go. B is a what of, of D? D major, B would be the sharp one six. D, E, F sharp, G, A, B would be the sixth, right? Yep. And C would be what? Flat seven. Flat seven, right? And then one. 
What do you see there? <coughs> what kind of skill do we see here? Second motor. <coughs> What does that scale look like? If you took out the, if you took out the flat two, what kind of scale would that be? Dorian. Dorian, right? So that's the naming convention. Dorian something, right? So we call this a Dorian. That's obvious. Flat two. Dorian flat two. Or a Dorian flat nine scale. Now, in relation to this over here, what's the closest one that matches up to it? This one, right? Phrygian is the closest one, right? Mm -hmm. But the difference would be that flat six, right? So some people would call that a Phrygian natural six. six or a Phrygian sharp six, right? That's a common thing that jazzers call it, a Phrygian sharp six. So that's coming from the second mode of the Malawian minor scale. So, go ahead, Alicia. So that scale, can you consider all those modes? That scale, starting from the second degree on D, mm -hmm. can be called a Dorian flat 2, a Dorian flat 9, or a Phrygian sharp 6, or a Phrygian natural 6. And then other people have lots of names for them. There's names that exist in lots of different books, but what basically it amounts to is the name I prefer, second mode of the melodic minor. All these synthetic names have been made up over each east coast, west coast, north Alaska to south Argentina, you know. They make up names for these modes. So you'll see these in books, and you'll see these in articles and magazines and stuff like that. People talking about different modes. What we're talking about is the second mode of melodic minor. And that's the name I prefer, second mode of melodic minor. Just like the Phrygian major, Ingve Malmsteen calls it the Phrygian mode, the Phrygian major. It's the fifth mode of harmonic minor. Makes it real easy to figure out. And I think a lot of music theory is presented by people that I call gatekeepers. They're like the guards at the gate. They don't want you to know the secret esoteric knowledge. They just want you to know how smart they are. So they, they make up these really advanced names for things because they're gatekeepers, right? So, second mode of melodic <laughs> minor. Great. Why don't we just call it like a melodic Dorian or something? There we go. It's too easy for me. It's too easy. There we go. I got you. But how would that explain the flat two? Well, it's the second of the C to a melodic minor. And well, for, if it's Dorian, we're starting on D, right? Yeah. So it'll be D melodic Dorian. Does that kind of tell you what it is? Or D Dorian flat two or D Dorian flat nine is a little better. But the second mode of Dorian, the second mode of melodic minor, it kind of nails it down, doesn't it? If you got the melodic minor scale, the second mode starting on the second degree of the scale, right? So that's my preference to call the second mode of melodic minor. But you can call it all these names. And all these names exist in lots of theory books and lots of jazz charts and things like that. Okay, what about the third mode? What do we got? Quack. Quack, is that what you said? The quack, quack mode? Same thing, I'm excited to move this thing. I just see it in it. Quack. It's all the same. Quack. So we've got E flat something here, right? So E flat to F, that's a whole step, right? So that's one to two, right? F to G to three. G to A, that's a whole step too, right? So that would be a sharp four, right? And A to B, that's a whole step too, right? So that'd be a sharp five. B to C, sharp five to six, right? Six to, and C to D would be a, a six to a seven, right? Mm -hmm. And then one. 
Okay, so what do we got here? What's the name I prefer? Third mode of melodic minor and abbreviated You write that like that. Or well, what's the scale? One, two, three, sharp, four. Well, that's a Lydian tetrachord, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. And then we have the Lydian mode is the closest one, right? Lydian sharp. But we've got the sharp five. So and then I've also seen George Russell This one's used a lot oh, because of George Russell. This one's used a lot in jazz, the terminology that he augmented. But it's just mode three of the melodic minor scale. Yeah. What kind of chord would you use that over? Well, on, if you start out on E flat, one, three, sharp, five, seven, that would be an augmented chord with a natural seven, right? So you'd have, that would be a major seven with a sharp five, right? So here we have E flat, G, B, against that chord very easily very easily. That sharp five is the is the one that pulls and pushes the scale. Okay. So we call that a Lydian augmented or a Lydian sharp five. Okay, what about the fourth mode of the melodic minor scale? What does that start on? F. F. Two really common names for that. Well, what, what do we? What, what's the uh, logical one that I like? Is the what fourth mode of melodic minor, right? So we got melodic minor. But it becomes a point where musicians, at this point, they go fourth mode of melodic minor. Okay, okay, okay. Somebody goes Lydian flat seven or Mixolydian sharp four. They go, ah, oh, yeah. 
because mixolydian is an easy scale to think of because everybody plays mixolydian in jazz and blues all over the place and they exist in common practice classical music mixolydian scales which is a major scale with a flat seven right yeah don't know <laughs> question mark scale a key signature here that's our key signature for not knowing we don't know What's the hey? Wait a minute. What's, what's today? Today's Wednesday. What, what, what's going on? But we have jazz band this morning, right? Go ahead. Um, so you're calling it melodic minor fourth mode of C. Yeah. So would you include that if you're being really specific about the color? Yeah. C melodic minor fourth mode. Is that pretty specific? Mode four of the C melodic minor scale. That's probably the most accurate. Mode four of the C melodic minor scale. But jazz guys and girls call this the Lydian flat seven all day long and the Mixolydian sharp four. I've heard Mixolydian sharp four from guys in LA and guys who come out here from New York. Oh yeah, it's a Lydian flat seven, huh? Yeah. So that has two names to it, but it's really a, one of the modes of the melodic minor, right? So this is why you need to know your major scales and your melodic minor scales and the third scale that you should know would be your harmonic minor scales. Those three scales form the skeleton of all of these modes that are used in all kinds of music. Now what scale didn't I mention that everybody assumes that you already know? Once you know the major scale, you know that it's relative minor, which would be the natural minor scale. Those two are the same thing, right? Relative major and minor. Alright, what's the fifth mode of a lot of minor? G. Is that a whole step? Yes. So there's a major tonality, right? B to C, is that a half step? Yes. Yeah. C to D, is that a whole step? Yeah. yeah. D to E flat, is that a whole step? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's right. All right, E flat to F. Well, that is supposed to be E to F sharp in a major scale, but that's F would be a whole step below G, so that would be a flat seven, right? One. Okay. So what do we got here? We got what's that chord? That's a, a G seven, right? Right? But we have a flat six. Well, a flat six is also called uh, as a compound interval. It's called a flat 13, right? You know that? Are you guys familiar with that? How many of you guys know and understand compound intervals? No? One That's what guy? we did last class, right? Putting something Com on top of the other one? Compound intervals? We do compound intervals? Okay. We put like yeah. third, uh, uh, like a, uh, what did we do? I don't know. We stacked thirds on top of each other that weren't supposed to be together, you know, like okay. G over D. We did the, well, we did chord family, the polychords. Polychord, that's yeah. Compound intervals are the intervals above an octave. So if you have if you have a C scale here, and you have a note here C, 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 C. <laughs> Unison, right? This is the second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. I forgot the D in there.
right there where you start compound intervals. This would be the 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th, 13th. So not just the same. C and D is the same as C and D. It's the second. Again, an octave higher would be the ninth. That's a compound interval. Wait. Unison, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth. And then it repeats. C and D again would be the ninth or the second repeated an octave higher. So C and E would be a third, but as a compound interval, it would be an octave above this, we call it a tenth. Yeah? Okay, so C and F would be a fourth interval. An octave above a fourth would be C and F would be called an eleventh. So this flat six, here's a six right here, C and A. Here's a six right there. So that would also be called a flat thirteen. What other name do we have for a flat six? What's an enharmonic equivalent of a flat six? A sharp five, right? So, so this chord could be G7, sharp five, or G7, flat 13. So that scale could be a G mixolydian because of the flat seven, right, Lindsay? Mixolydian flat 13 or a mixolydian flat six scale. Mixolydian is one, two, three, four, five, six, flat seven, one, right? And the six, if you flat it, it's still, the core of the scale is still the mixolydian, but you have a mixolydian flat six or Six is the same as the thirteen, right? So mixolydian flat thirteen scale. But people have ambiguity on that, so we call it the fifth mode of the melodic minor scale. Right, Greg? Yeah. 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 That way you go. Oh, oh, oh okay. Thanks. Let's play it, right? <coughs> All right. What about the sixth mode? Starting on A, what do we get? A, B, C, D, E flat, F, G, A, right? USC, people who teach at USC, they refer to it as the low Korean sharp two. That's what I said. Did you go to USC? No. <laughs> I thought the same thing. But what is it? It's the sixth mode of melodic minor, right? So all these fancy names for all these scales, they're just modes of the melodic minor and they're modes of the harmonic minor. So all these gatekeepers who put up all these fancy names trying to scare you, you just go, eh, you can't fool me, I know you are just talking about the melodic minor scale, you name. <laughs> so yeah, take these pills and call me if you're still alive. <laughs> uh, <laughs> exactly. Exactly what you would say. <laughs> All right. So what we're getting at is we got these modes in melodic minor, which with the crazy names, and the crazy names 
weeks. We look back to this chart to see do they match up close to anything here? And so we take one of the words from here and we add the modification. Like the Phrygian major would be a, a Phrygian mode with a natural three in it, right? And that's the fifth mode of the harmonic minor scale. So the names are kind of trying to analyze what you would call it, right? And then some of these guys get really bold and they call this, well, we shall call this the Prometheus flat 13 scale. No. Prometheus. Did he live upon the mountain with Apollo? Uh, indeed he did. <laughs> they used to play this game that was the predecessor of checkers called Hackers. One more in this one here. Flat four, and we just go. Flat four. 
What are you talking about? Huh? So what else do we call that? The three. Three, huh? Well, if you've got a three, you call that a three, right? What can we call a flat three? We could also call that sharp two. A sharp nine. Oh, sharp nine. Sharp. So this would be a flat nine, a sharp nine, a three, a flat five, a flat thirteen, and a flat seven. So we've got one, we've got three, we've got flat five, and we got flat seven. So we've got a one, three, flat five, flat seven. A dominant seven, flat five, right? And then we got a sharp nine, flat nine, and flat thirteen. So that qualifies as dominant seven. <laughs> oh. Okay. <laughs> so when you see this, dominant seven alt or dominant seven sharp nine flat nine flat thirteen, you can play the seventh mode of the melodic minor scale. But what do we got when we do that? We got half step, whole step. Flat three to three is a half step, right? Whole step, whole step, whole step. We got that kind of a tension chord. Half step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, whole step. Whole step, whole step, whole step. Strange scale, huh? How about we just call it the seventh one of the melodic Yeah, that's easier. See why? Some of these names can get pretty obscure. It gets pretty tricky to analyze what they fit over because you've got to try these as compound intervals to see with a sharp nine, a flat nine, all that stuff. That scale will work. Okay. So now, every melodic minor has seven modes to it, and all the, all the names are going to, you're going to find names all over the place for these modes. People call them different modes. You know, what's the gypsy minor scale? Anybody heard of that? Right, because people call it a different name, you know. I call it a Hungarian minor because that's the main region it came out of. Was that, that region of the world. Gypsy minor. There's so many different modes that are just derivative of modern minor. Six to a natural seven. How far is that from one from, one of the, from the flat six to seven? That's a whole step plus a half step. Yeah. That's one and a half steps. One and a half steps, right? This is the signature. And some would call this the impression. That's the impression that you get when you play the scale. Is that, that step and a half interval in the scale has that strong impression. So it's easy to identify that scale when you hear it because of that step and a half. We're going to continue with this on Wednesday. Everybody got one of these? You mean Friday? Um, <laughs> Friday? Wednesday, Wednesday in Australia, right? Yeah. Are we going to be here in the. Yeah. Oh. 
Okay, so here's your homework assignments by the end of the month, okay? You get to get the weeks to study. Remember these down? Yep. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And it's on Blackboard, okay?